complaining. You know what? Compared to a whole bunch of just pictures and names out there, y'all look a whole lot better. <laughs> you really do. And I can look at you and, and smile and you smile back. The other ones, you're just kind of oddly smiling at me. It was weird. <laughs> like, are they laughing at my jokes? Or are they just, hmm? <laughs> but you know, it is kind of hard to breathe in this thing, especially when you forget your sermon downstairs. <sighs> you got to run down and get it and run back up here. But before we get started, a word of prayer. Father, thank you for this opportunity. An opportunity to praise you and to worship you. An opportunity, Father, to... Huh, some form of normalcy, almost, kind of, sort of. Father, we have our trust and our faith in you. We know you got us. And even when things look rough, highlights come out. Blessings upon blessings. From a graduation to a new job to someone entering glory. Your promises being fulfilled. Father, in all of these things, we are just from earth's humble shores thanking you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Okay, before we get started, a couple mass jokes. Okay? <laughs> right now, you don't know if I'm sticking my tongue out at you or not. <laughs> okay, I'm not, but... Okay, a couple of you. How about, with this mask on, I'm not breathing in anything dirty, I'm not breathing out anything dirty, and I'm not seeing anything dirty. <laughs> If I had two of them, I'm not hearing anything dirty. Okay, I'm done. <laughs> the best I come up with, right? The best the writers could come up with late at night. But let's get started with, welcome back! But it just doesn't seem to be enough. Doesn't it? It just seems like, welcome back, family. It just doesn't... I've been thinking, how do, how do you welcome you back? How do you say... But we've been... A lot of us have been together anyway in phone or Zoom or text, or, we're still gathered together and glued together with the Spirit of God. Amen? Amen? I love being able to gather with you in the building. I love being able to air hug. <laughs> Would I prefer an actual hug? Yes. But it's what I get to do. And, and remember how I preach? We get to do this. We are still allowed to do these things. And it's not from a, a oppression or anything like that. We get to do this because God has granted us the ability to be able to do this. And for that, we should be thankful. Amen? Amen. But you know, I started looking at this whole thing about welcome. Welcome. And what does that word really mean? If you look it up in the dictionary, what does the word welcome mean? And let me tell you, there's a list like that of different things that welcome truly means, and I, I'm not going to go through all of them. I'm going to be like everybody else in the world, and I'm going to take a word, and I'm going to pick the meaning that means that fits me best. Okay. <clears throat> welcome. The, in the modern Webster's, this is right off of Google, to greet with hospitality or cordially. Did we greet each other hospitality with hospitality and cordially this morning? We smile. Welcome back. Love you, missed you. So we did that part, right? We did that meaning. But here, an adjective. Receive gladly into one's presence or companionship. I'm thinking, now, nah, that's better. That's getting a little closer to the bone. What I'm thinking of what I want to talk about, or be when I'm talking about welcome back, is to welcome you gladly into one's presence or companionship. That feels better. And then I started thinking, or if the Lord started going, whack, we're, we're getting closer, Greg, come on. What about when we go to prayer? What about when we go into our closet or in the secret and we start praying to him or praising him? Guess what God's doing? He's welcoming you back. He's welcoming you back into his presence. And he does that gladly. Welcomes you into his presence. Wow, that whole idea of welcome 
It's starting to have more and more feeling for me. It's starting to make more and more sense. How about this one? Synonyms of the word welcome. Agreeable. Huh, I like that one. Blessed or blessed. All right. Thank you, God. That's getting there. Heavenly. And I didn't make this up. This is right on, right on the Webster Dictionary website. And then the last one that God's having me build this entire sermon off of, grateful. Grateful. A synonym of welcome is grateful. I am very grateful that I am here. I am very grateful that all of you are well enough to be here and are willing to sacrifice an uncomfortable <laughs> to be here to worship God, to worship your Savior. And now that we are in His presence, I am very grateful. Let's work, let's look at the, let's look at the rest of it, shall we? Woo. Grateful or gratitude. I like that word. In Colossians chapter three, I'm going to actually read from Colossians three twelve through seventeen. The key verse is in 16, though. Pay attention to there. It says, Therefore, as God's chosen people... Do you feel chosen this morning? Do you feel chosen? Because you are. Therefore, as God's chosen people, holy and dearly loved, dearly loved, clothe yourself with compassion. And, and folks, right now, in this world that we're living in, if we are not living with compassion... What's the antonym of compassion? It's getting into hatred and anger. We don't want to live that way. Right here, God is telling us. He wants us. As His chosen people to be filled with compassion, kindness, humility, gentleness, and patience. If you turn on the news, you're not going to see much of this at all. Let me tell you, in your heart, in your heart of hearts, inside your very being, this is what God wants you to be. This is what God wants you to be. Can you be mad about something? Sure. But with that, we have to display love. We have to display love. Compassion, kindness, humility, gentleness, and patience. Verse 13. Bear with each other and forgive one another if any of you has a grievance against someone. Wow. Forgive. Forgive as the Lord forgave you. What would this world be like if everyone, and I'm not talking about everybody, absolutely everybody, but how about just those that say that they read this on a daily basis? that say that they go to the Lord in their closet and they pray to Him. That if questioned, hey, are you a Christian? Yes, I am. If we were all to act as this Scripture says to act, what would this life, what would this world be like? I don't, I don't believe that it would be anything like it is today. I just don't believe that. We won't get into the... Well, maybe we will. Oh. <laughs> Sorry, I kind of made a promise I'd be done in 15 minutes. Verse 14. And over all these virtues, virtues, put on love, which binds them all together in perfect unity. What glues us together? Love. Verse 15, let the peace of Christ rule in your hearts, since as members of one body you were called to peace. And be thankful. Let the message of Christ dwell among you as richly as you teach and admonish one another with all wisdom through psalms, through hymns, we just sang, and songs from the Spirit singing to God with gratitude in your hearts. 
don't know if you were seeing with gratitude this morning, but I certainly was. Hearing all your voices, especially when the music died out and we sang, sang on, that was beautiful. Even with this thing in front of us, folks, it was beautiful. Verse 17. And whatever you do, whether in word or deed, do it all in the name of the Lord Jesus, giving thanks to God the Father through Him. Giving thanks to the God through Him. You know, backing up a little bit to the to the um, verse 14. Well, I can back up all of it all over again. Verse 12, excuse me. Compassion, kindness, humility, gentleness, patience. What do those sound like to you? Fruit of the Spirit. Fruit of the Spirit. Oh, let's turn to Galatians chapter 5, shall we? <laughs> yes, fruits of the Spirit. The fruit of the Spirit. The, the evidence of what is within us. You, you've heard... If you haven't heard it before, you've heard me say it, that the evidence of your faith, the evidence of the Spirit working within you, is what comes out of you. What the what we can even call what the world sees, what your neighbor sees, what your best friend sees coming out of you is your fruit. Is it what is it? Love, joy, peace, forbearance, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control? Or is it rotten, rotten bananas? Sour grapes. Hmm. Something that the seed is rotten within it. You put it in the ground, it's going to grow nothing. What happened to the fig tree when it was time to bear fruit and Jesus came up to reach up and there were no figs? What happened? It withered and died. Folks, if we are not bearing with one another, if we are not doing what God is asking us to do as His chosen people, and the fruit, these fruits are not coming out of us, are we in fear of withering and dying? Is this world that we are seeing burning itself down, beginning to wither and die? I'd like you to, at, in your convenience, go to God and pray and ask about that. Ask Him to guide you Father, is this what's really happening? And what can I, what can I do about it? With this in mind, let's move forward in, in forgiveness, and love, and peace toward fellow man and woman. That's what he's asking us to do. Speaking of moving forward, you know, to continue on, I'm not talking about as a church, <laughs> as a church, we're going to keep continuing on the best we can, how we can, within the confines of the law. Not the Mosaic law, the law of the land. They say, y'all got to wear, stay six feet apart, wear a mask. Okay, we're still praising God. If in phase three they say you can take the mask off or you can do this or that, great. But you can't do this. We're not. Okay? Just to make sure we're all clear on this. Whatever the CDC says, going to do. Do I like it? No. I don't. <laughs> but to continue on, what else have we got today, tomorrow, or a year from now? What else have we got? We can make choices. It's all, is it all about choices? Is your life all about choices? You chose to get up this morning and seek out God. What are you going to do tomorrow? What are you going to do next week or a year from now? Are you going to keep continuing, continuing on? Folks, we've got plans to continue on with the VBS in July. We've got about a month. We're going to do it. You know why? Because we can. Because we get to. We don't have to. We get to. Is it a lot of hard work? A lot of planning? A lot of late nights here at the church with paint in your hair? Yeah. Some people enjoy that part of it. <laughs> Some of us don't. But we're going to continue on. And in 1 Timothy 4, 9 through 10 says, This is a trustworthy saying that deserves full acceptance. That is why we labor and strive, because we have put our hope in the living God, who is the Savior of all people, and especially of those 
who believe. Why do we do things like wear masks? Why do we do things like put a VBS together? Why do we do things like come down on a Saturday night and tape off pews? Because we trust God. He's got this. We understand that He's going to guide us and love us through whatever's going on. If this is the worst thing that ever happens to, to you, you are truly, truly blessed. Let me tell you. Truly blessed. That this is why we labor and strive. Because we have put our hope in the living God. We put our hope in our Savior. Man will, will fail you. The earth itself is groaning towards the end times. Friends and loved ones, you know, they leave, they come and go. They're taken to early or there are life changes. But our God does not change. Does not change. Someone might question, well, has he changed You know, this pandemic? That's weird. No, it's not. It's been going on through generation, generation, for millennia. If you're not a history buff, Come see me, I'll, I'll help you out. Our last one was in 1918, last to 1920, a hundred years ago, right? It seems kind of odd that those that very few people remember that one, they had to go, oh yeah, wait a minute. And you know what the biggest thing was? Oh, it was, you heard that it killed lots of people. But the Seattle NHL Cup didn't get the finish because of that. That seemed like the big story of the... Of the of the pandemic of 1918. They didn't get to finish the NHL Cup. How sad is that? I, I wonder what the generations ahead will remember about this little thing, this pandemic. Hmm. Is it how, oh, well, they sure still loved one another, or they tore each other apart in the streets? Hmm. We put our hope we put our hope into Him whose promises are real and the only ones to be counted on as reliable. We put our hope in Jesus. Amen? If you, if you haven't decided whether or not you, where you're going to put your hope and put your eternity, I suggest you, you find out. I suggest that you talk to someone. I suggest that you pray. Don't leave, don't leave God on a shelf. I tell you what, He won't stay there. If you are like we read in one of the earlier scriptures, you are one of the chosen ones. He, by the way, He already knows if you do or not, if you are or not. It's a whole other story, whole other sermon. Don't try to leave Him on a shelf. You won't be able to. Love this out of Psalms. Why are you so downcast, O oh my soul? Why so disturbed within me? Put your hope in God. Amen? Amen. 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 We're going to close this morning. I'm going to have a word of prayer. The girls are going to come back up and lead us through a song. And yes, things are still a little different. We have one more thing we have to do is when it's time to go, we can't group up like we normally do and visit. We have to be good boys and girls, right? So I'll be going to the back and ushering you out, road of time. Um, if you guys go out in the parking lot and spend all day, I don't care. <laughs> it's unfortunate, but what's I, I keep seeing billboards everywhere. And this too shall pass. Amen? Amen. Let's pray. Father, I pray a blessing upon this family. I want to ask, Father, that you continue to be with Virginia and Boston, be with Carol and her, the, their whole family. It's a tough time right now. I pray that they can be together. And that there can be support for Carol in these last days. Father, I want to lift up those that are hurting within this body right here. Father, thank you.
thank you so much. I want to pray for those that aren't here this morning. I know where some of them are, and it's okay. They still love you, and they're still, they just need more time. But there are some, Father, that I, I don't have a count of yet. But I know you do, and I just want to ask that you put your hand upon them and love them through. Bring them back to us. Thank you so much. It's in Jesus' powerful and precious name we pray. Amen. Amen.